So here's a picture of our portable waste tank, which we bought in August of 2019. Hi everybody, it's Ed with Over the Hills 2019 and this little episode is about our handy dandy little portable waste containment system known as a PWCS. Uh, I call it a uh, beep stroller, but anyway. Um, if you'd watched earlier videos when we were getting ready to go on this grand adventure of ours, uh, we put two tanks in the back of the truck. We, I installed two 47-gallon polypropylene rectangular tanks. One was going to be for fresh water. The other one is going to be, or has been, for gray water. And we never had this. And Sandy wanted to get this right from the get-go, and I fought her on it, fought her on it. Well, in reality, here's what we ran into. When we're out and we're camping someplace with just water or electric, or, or just electric, uh, the fresh water tank works fine. The gray water tank works fine, but the black water tank doesn't stop filling up. So we should have got this right off the bat. And this is a Camco portable waste containment system. And uh, it's sort of the Cadillac of, of these uh, systems. And the reason uh, Sandy chose this one, and rightly so, is First off, it has a 36 gallon capacity, 136 liters, whatever flips your switch in measurement. And our tanks are around 30 gallons, so we know we wouldn't have to worry about overspill. It's got more capacity than our tanks. Obviously, you can only empty one by one. We have two gray water tanks and a black water tank. The two gray water tanks aren't connected. So now we bought this thing. We bought a uh, little unit a frame so it attaches to the back of the trailer and the reason we settled on this one isn't just the capacity it's these buggers super heavy duty wheels um, and it's not cheap I don't remember the price of it but uh, it's been working great for us and uh, Sandy had read reviews on these smaller blue ones that we see with little itty bitty wheels uh, I see them around and I have seen them with a wheel missing, and they've made done makeshift things. And that's the thing that she read about with those smaller blue tanks, that uh, the wheels keep falling off. We've never had any trouble with this. Uh, we've been using it now for a little bit. And uh, i got to admit, should have got this right from the get-go. I would have never had to have that gray water tank in the back. And... Uh, I do sorely want to get rid of that second tank back there because it will obviously free up more room in the bed, but also help me with weight distribution management because I'll be able to arrange the heavy equipment in the back of the truck, such as the generator, spare propane tank, move them forward to the rear axle, and uh, it, it'll give us a better ride, I'm sure. So I uh, highly recommend one of these if you're going to get one. Uh, our advice would be don't get the cheap one. You're just going to wind up having a problem and um, you might as well just bite the bullet and go with the big guy and get a bracket so you can, it's not taking up room in the truck you can put on the uh, back of the trailer. Uh, really like it. Now one problem that we do have with it though, there's two things you need to know about this thing. Again, we bought it by capacity. So the dimensions to get that capacity, the fill where the waste goes in is higher than, the, than our exit gates on our trailer. So what's the solution? It was simple, but it took my brain a while to figure it out. And the simple solution was hook a lot of hose up. So this thing sits away from the trailer, and when you've got all that hose, you, liquid's laying it, you can pick the hose up, go along, and make sure you get it all dumped in there. You don't have any spills. Uh, right towards the end, I just don't connect from the trailer, shut the valve gate, of course, and then I can just lift that hose up and make sure that everything gets in there. So what I thought was a big problem to begin with isn't a big problem. You just have to do some thinking about how to solve it, come up with a solution. That's my little ditty about our portable waste containment system. I hope you've enjoyed it. hope it's been helpful. Oh, and another thing, you can't back up when you see it on the back of there. So don't, you know, it's easy to do. You put it on the trailer and your, or, or on the hitch and your truck or your vehicle's in a spot, and then you think you're going to go back up. It ain't going to happen. It's going to pivot on you. You can't do it. 
uh, and obviously just be prudent, speed on the way to the dump station, you know, don't drive it like your truck like you stole it, just get to the dump station and get rid of the stuff. Has a gate on the side, has a flush, so you can spin a little thing in there, wash it all out. Uh, again, I like it very much, sorry I fought Sandy so much on it. And now I got a second tank in the truck. I got to figure out how to get it. Well, this is our Camco Rhino portable waste uh, stroller. And you might want to wonder, why is it laying on its back? It's really kind of disappointing. You know, we got this because uh, it's supposed to be like top of the line. Um, and it had great reviews. And the wheels, it was mostly the wheels because everybody was saying on the other models, the wheels fall off. This one's bulletproof. Well... This is the fourth time I've used this thing. I go about five miles an hour when I'm towing it. And uh, I got back to the trailer, and one wheel was missing. And the axle was slid. This wheel was the one that was on. And it was slid out about two inches. So this whole axle just slid out and apparently put pressure on all this and it came apart. I could not find the parts to save my life. Sandy comes to help me, and man, she spotted everything, got the wheel back, the two bearings, the washer, and the cap. So I've reassembled everything. We took a little bit of a hit here. It's still okay. And this axle is just so loose, it just slides back and forth there. So I figure that's what's gotta have happened and the only thing I can think of doing right at the moment is this is uh, that Gorilla Tape, which is awesome. It's, gosh, is it sticky. And I put that across the axle, and it, it, it seems to have it held pretty good. Of course, it's not under any dynamics right at the moment. So it was either the axle shifted and pushed these end caps off, or the end cap came off and the axle shifted because the wheel fell off. I don't know, and there's no way to know. You remember the good old days when there was a thing called cotter pins that you put in the end of axles, like on your uh, little red wider wagon, things like that? Anyway, that's my fix. Okay, so this is the wheel that came off. Um, the bearing goes in here. There's two bearings, an inside one, and an outside one, which is still intact. This washer butts up against the shoulder on the axle um, to keep it in place. And this goes on the end of the axle to stop the wheel from falling off. Could you get any cheaper? Uh, I'm a big fan of cotter pins. But this is what I want to show you. Now, I know this kind of stuff from uh, mold design and things, and I was involved in the plastic industry. They have five supports here. Now, if you look at these, and I'm sorry about the background noise, we're at court site, and man, this is it's a busy place. But, okay, one's broke out. This one failed. If you look at this one and this one, I can move this. See how it moves? What's happening is, because there's no support in these areas, the stress is the plastic yields. It's, it's going beyond the yield strength of the plastic and it fails. So, I found these uh, in town quartzite. I had to run over to Blythe, California at Ace Hardware to get an axle that would fit. So instead of this axle that's shouldered down for those itty bitty things, I'm going to have a solid shaft all the way through here. I put some JD weld back here to uh, one of the problems is the axle slides back and forth. So that'll stop the axle from sliding back and forth. Then this washer, I'll put some JD weld to stop the wheel from coming up against and rubbing the tank. And on this side, um, I'm just going to try catching it maybe with a, a piece of hose and a couple of, of clamps and stop it from walking off. I don't feel like trying to worry a hole through here for a collar pin. As it is right now, Sandy and I are taking turns, sawing through this steel 5.8 diameter rod, I believe, 
to try and get it to some reasonable size with this. <laughs> In the middle of the desert. And quartz size. But it is working. It's but just it's really working. slow. Yeah, baby. See? It's <laughs> so the center section of these wheels where the bearings are is only tack welded onto the rest of the wheel. These red wheels lasted maybe about three months and then the tack weld busted on one of them. After that we found these wheels and these are special no flat wheels meaning they are solid rubber. They looked better than anything we had already tried, and they got us through the rest of our first year at Quartzsite. And we didn't use the waste tank after that until we got back to Quartzsite again in the fall of 2020. But these wheels lasted through our entire second season in Quartzsite as well, which was about five and a half months. But right at the end of our second season, we could see that these wonderful no flat tires were starting to separate. So we knew we would have to find another solution. And once again, we didn't use our waste tank during our travel. So we knew we had some time to think about this and get it right. So here's what we ended up doing. We got a macerator pump, not a cheap investment. This was about $233. So this macerator pump hooks right onto the valves of our tanks and it pumps everything out through a standard 5 8 inch garden hose which of course is now dedicated for only that purpose and then the hose hooks onto the portable waste tank during this process the waste tank is sitting in the bed of our truck right near the edge of the tailgate and then we just drive the truck to the dump station to empty it so this is a solution we came up with that works for us now we've seen other people with this large 36 gallon tank at Quartzsite and we've actually seen quite a lot of them. We see them with replacement tires, we see them in beds of trucks, and we've seen them being pulled behind a truck on the side of the road with a large spill mark on the dirt behind them and busted up wheels scattered alongside the road. So if you buy one of the larger 36 gallon tanks, please be prepared for something bad to happen. These tanks weigh almost 300 pounds when they're full and plastic wheels, weak wheels, just are not gonna hold up under that weight. So it's only a matter of time before something happens. Now we've also seen a lot of folks with the smaller 20 to 25 gallon waste tanks. We know that some of these people use them with macerator pumps because we see them on the beds of trucks or on the backs of their side-by-sides or razors. Um, we've also seen several of the smaller tanks on trailers. We've seen some like hand-built trailers that are built just to that size to just hold that tank. Um, we've also seen some people that have their smaller tanks strapped to a dolly um, and I'm talking dolly like you use to move your washing machine and they're pulling it down the road behind their truck strapped to that dolly. We've also seen people pulling them behind their truck too, um, just like they were made to do, but we don't know how old these are or how often they're used. Um, we have no way of knowing if they have found a way to tow it that it doesn't fall apart or if it's just new and nothing crazy has happened to it yet, um, there's really no way of knowing. Um, so there you go. This is what we know and what we've done to solve this problem. We're still very happy that we bought it because the only other alternative is to pack up our trailer and tow it to the dump station every time that we need to dump. And we just, <laughs> we just don't feel like doing that. That's a lot of work. So we have no regrets about buying this waste tank and hopefully we found a long-term solution this time. Hope this video helps you out and thanks so much for watching. Take care.
So the center section of these wheels where the bearings are is only tack welded onto the rest of the wheel. These red wheels lasted maybe about three months and then the tack weld busted on one of them. After that, we found these wheels and these are special no flat wheels, meaning they are solid rubber. They looked better than anything we had already tried and they got us through the rest of our first year at Quartzsite. And we didn't use the waste tank after that until we got back to Quartzsite again in the fall of 2020. But these wheels lasted through our entire second season in Quartzsite as well, which was about five and a half months. But right at the end of our second season, we could see that these wonderful no flat tires were starting to separate. So we knew we would have to find another solution. And once again, we didn't use our waste tank during our travels, so we knew we had some time to think about this and get it right.